And some good music there to kind of get us into the holiday season. That was uh, Glenn Miller and Sleigh Ride. Good sound there. But welcome into the Wednesday edition of Helping Seniors of Brevard. I'm John Harper. Let's get things underway as we introduce the Executive Director of Helping Seniors of Brevard and your host of the show, Carrie Fink. Hi, Carrie. Hey, John Harper. It is so good to be here as it is every Wednesday right here on 90.3 FM WEJF. And uh, uh, also welcome to the listeners who uh, join us online. They actually could uh, be not only from all over Brevard County, but literally any place there's an internet, which is pretty much the whole wide world. So welcome to our listeners on WEJF.net. And as I always like to add, um, really uh, so grateful to have uh, the listeners who are also joining and lots of them, uh, because we archive these uh, uh, broadcasts. We turn them into podcasts, and so people catch them later on the Helping Seniors website, which is helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. A lot of people like to catch them on our YouTube page, Helping Seniors of Brevard. And a lot of people also follow us along on Facebook, which is Helping Seniors of Brevard. So to everyone who joins us for Helping Seniors Radio, uh, this is the organization that Joe Steckler founded. He's our president and founder. And uh, those of you that know Joe know he's a tireless advocate for seniors. And one of the people that has stood by Joe literally since before uh, there was a Helping Seniors organization is another longtime friend of the Helping Seniors organization. And I am going to introduce him momentarily. But first, I want to uh, put a little note of congratulations in the air for him because I am looking at uh, the website for this organization. And once again, in 2021, it says they have been voted best of the best in the Space Coast Florida today, uh, I guess, uh, whatever you would call it, the poll of the best businesses in that category. And I'm speaking of none other than Dr. Lee Sheldon with Solid Bike Dental. How are you this morning? That's great. Great, Kerry. Good to talk with you again. Well, and congratulations. Hey, well, I I, 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 let me brag about uh, let me brag about my organization while you're bragging about my organization. Sure, um, Doctor Doctor Furtado is on his just completed his second trip to Portugal. He's got another pr- trip to Portugal next week to bring a totally new surgical treatment to people of Brevard County, and this. He's the only one in the United States who is taking this study. And essentially what he's taking a course in is in training tissue to look, training tissue around dental implants to look exactly like tissue around teeth. And so that some of the, uh, when when we take out all the teeth and we we replace teeth uh, with dental implants, right now it's a big ceramic prosthesis that we put in place, and that's what you see advertised. Essentially, what he's going to do is create an environment where he and um, my son Matthew can make these teeth look exactly like teeth. This wow. is so exciting, and some of the work that he's doing while he goes to Portugal, Matthew's going to Phoenix and doing some advanced training there in order to bring things to a higher level than I could ever have dreamed of in this practice. You know, that's what's always fascinating. I know uh, going back, you you have done so many uh, radio and television programs together uh, with Joe Steckler over the years. And then also you and I have had the privilege of doing a number of shows uh, on different topics. And I've really come to understand how you really have always been, ever since you established the practice here in Brevard County, have always been kind of on the cutting edge of everything. I remember you were one of the leaders in talking about um, dental implants and, and how that can work and then you've also been careful to explain that's not always uh the best solution and as a periodontist you always uh, tend to look at, at at overall mouth health and and all of that first but it's just not surprising to me that uh you guys are are hard charging and leading the way again uh on innovations that will make better quality of life for uh for everybody who sees you guys very exciting very exciting i am so proud of these guys as you know i'm I'm the examining dentist now. I haven't done any dental treatment in years. But uh, <laughs> just to see see how this is developing, you know, how, how satisfying can it be in a practice that I started in 1980 to see what uh, these two prodigies are doing right now? It's just, uh, it's, 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 it, 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 I don't have to practice dentistry anymore. I don't have to see patients anymore. I don't have to be here anymore. 
<laughs> but I'm so excited about being here and just seeing the results that are occurring in our patients. It's just so, so great. Well, it's terrific. And actually today, what we had sort of set aside as our main theme is we're going to continue the dialogue that we began last month, which was uh, we were talking about what makes a good dental exam. And that's what we started talking about last month. Before we get there, though, uh, as the great uh, Glenn Miller Orchestra brought us in with the uh, sleigh ride music, uh, you know, we're in the thick of the holiday season. People are uh, celebrating the holidays here in December. And it's it's always a festive time of year. And I think it's also a very special time of year, Dr. Sheldon, because if you remember last year, it was anything but normal. We were still uh, uh, trying to figure out, you know, could we get together with family? Uh, were we supposed to wear one mask, 20 masks? Were we supposed to, uh, uh, they were they were trying, they were just trying to get us ready for, um, uh, you know, all the things with the vaccinations and all that. So what a difference a year makes. And I'm excited for that. But one of the things that I wanted us to talk about also a little bit as we uh, work through the different topics that we want to cover today is uh, Joe, uh, and you know Joe. So, folks, Joe Steckler, our president and founder, he's the retired naval captain. Um, he commanded submarines early in his career, but later on, he ended up, uh, his last command in the Navy was he was in charge of the Navy's uh, retirement home in Gulfport, Mississippi. And before he and his wife, Terry, moved to uh, uh, Brevard County, I guess he got a deep and, and impressive understanding of the needs uh, that seniors face throughout that. And when they got to Brevard County, he didn't let up. He could have retired. I guess Dr. Sheldon, in many ways, a lot like you, he could have retired, but instead chose to go into uh, really serving the community. And you've been right there step by step with him all along the way. He, uh, Joe created the, uh, and, and really built those things called the Joe's Clubs, part of the Brevard Alzheimer's. He got all that set up. And then literally about 11 years ago, uh, he came to uh, uh, all of us and said, I think people have more issues than just memory issues as we get older. I want I want to try to come up with an organization that can really help people with what, what he calls an aging plan. So our whole life, you know, they say when you're a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? What's your plan? Uh, when you're an adult, they say, well, what's your plan? Are you going to send your kids to college? Are you going to buy a house? What are you going to do? We get older, they say, what's your retirement plan? But the retirement plan is usually just financially based. Like, you know, what are you going to do with your four? 1k or how are you going to uh, make it after you stop working and things like that but what joe is talking about is an aging plan and what he means by that is just like we live along the coast of florida so we understand having a hurricane plan you don't want the hurricane to land but you do want to know what you would do if they told you it's coming straight for us and so joe's point is we have to be aware of some of the things that could befall us as the years keep uh, uh, keep piling on and so with that in mind uh we're actually theming 2022. We started talking about this last week on the radio program with uh, elder law board, board certified elder law attorney. I might add, uh, Bill Johnson. Uh, we, we've been t we've been tagging it called getting your ducks in a row because we you know it's kind of intimidating when you start talking about stuff like this. But we're wanting the people to to be a little bit proactive. I'm sure, Doctor Sheldon, as you have patients come into the office. Um, in a, in a perfect world, you would see them before there's mouth problems and help them prevent them rather than having to do sometimes the, uh, the pretty uh, complex and, and uh, uh, intense kind of things that you might otherwise do to save a mouth that could have been helped a lot earlier. Am I saying that's the right way? It's true. And, and, you know, the downfalls are the same as they always have been. Poor oral hygiene and eating a lot of sugar. You do those two things, then I've got more work to do or my or, or our doctors have more work to do. And so, yes, when we're talking about prevention, I mean, part of it is early discovery. This is one of those areas where if you discover something early, you have less treatment uh, needs uh, as a result. Um, but the other thing is doing everything you can to prevent yourself from needing us in the first place. Well, right. And, and, and as, I, as you've educated me along the way, uh, and, and our listeners and viewers, uh, you've really made it clear that not only do you subscribe to the fact that uh, having good oral uh, health is not only important for your mouth, but it, it, it actually, th even through some of the studies and things that you've been following, uh, really has a lot to do, or can have a lot to do with your overall health. It does, because we have such a relationship. I mean, the, the cause and effect uh, between um, periodontal disease and diabetes is clear. 
um, the associative effect uh, between periodontal disease and every other chronic disease we have in the body, including Alzheimer's disease, including heart disease, um, kidney disease for moms, low birth weight babies. We've got a very strong association there, which is leading to a at least a partial cause and effect from one to the other. We've got some interesting studies that you and I talked about, I think, two months ago, Carrie, which showed within... Um, uh, just st- studying insurance codes, you looked at those people who had heart disease and those people who had periodontal disease, and there was a very strong correlation. You had uh, also uh, those people who had heart disease and had it treated, uh, I'm sorry, had periodontal disease and had it treated, they spent less money or the insurance company spent less money on heart disease treatment. And so when we talk about associated, that means we're not proving cause and effect yet, but it's getting closer and closer and closer, including identification of bacteria in the mouth in the heart, within the heart, within the coronary arteries, that it, 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 that, that we're finding uh, it's getting closer and closer to a proof that there's a cause and effect here. When So that when we ignore, or if we ignore a periodontal condition uh, and just let it be, it isn't just a matter of tooth loss. It can be far, far more devastating than that. Yeah, and I and I think uh, so. Again, if we go back to what what does getting your ducks in a row mean? You know, uh, we talk about this a lot, Doctor Sheldon. That most of us are creatures of uh, of inertia. <laughs> we 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 uh, we find the path. You know, they always say making uh, no decision is actually making a decision. And sometimes we get busy with life and we forget to do things that we we really probably in our head know better <laughs> that we need to be doing. But then we but then for some reason or rather we get busy we say i'll get to that later and i think part of joe's call about this whole aging plan thing is to get us to get ahead of those things and and take care of things i know when i talk to um Bill Johnson last week on the radio, uh, he talks so often that he wishes he would meet people uh, maybe 30 days before some crisis happened because uh, from a legal standpoint of, w- of what they can do to help maybe a relative who wound up in the hospital, um, the, the, the options get closed down real quick if some if some planning hasn't been done ahead of time so that somebody can step in and 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 work on behalf of that person uh in in those times of need and I have to believe the same is going to be true as we talk about uh, the things that we're going to talk about today, about the components of a good dental exam. I'm assuming that one of the most important reasons that you do the dental exam, I mean, we all know when we have mouth pain, that's usually when we call the dentist. But but I would assume that one of the real benefits of getting a good dental exam is that it's going to help us identify something and maybe to help head it off in the past when a small problem doesn't have to become a big problem. It's true, Kerry, because we, as a matter of fact, we had a staff meeting this morning, and we are, thank goodness, it's a good problem to have. We are just overrun with patients. We've got, we're, we're, we're booked up quite a bit in advance. And, of course, when somebody comes in, they want to get, get treatment done. Um, and, you know, we, 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 we'll do that, but it, it takes a little bit of time, particularly to do what we're doing in order to be able to do it the way we want to do it. Um, and, and, but... But uh, Danielle mentioned the fact that we have people calling us that um, saw us three years ago and then never did any treatment. And, of course, when we're and, and so they're calling, they have an emergency now. When wow. we're doing our treatment planning, we do treatment plan in phases. One of the and, and the first phase is to take care of infections and immediate needs, which, by the way, is relatively inexpensive and can be taken care of rather quickly. That's when we're doing a reconstruction of the mouth, that takes planning just like building a house does. But when we're taking care of initial problems, those initial problems will be taken care of right away. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to talk more about the components of, of a clinical examination, but part of it is once you've had the clinical examination, you don't have to do it all, but take care of the immediate needs so they don't become an emergency uh, at a time when you can't, you know, when, when we've got that toothache, it's at, at, at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Um, you know, get get your immediate needs taken care of and then phase things out appropriately so that you are in control of your dental health rather than the dental disease being in control of you. 
You know, I, this may be a bad analogy, but I keep thinking about uh, how we treat our cars. Every time you buy a new car, you know, they give you this extensive owner's manual. And if you flip to the little chart in the back, it says, you know, at 5,000 miles, do this, change your oil, et cetera. At 10,000 miles, do this, change this or change that. And um, there's this whole list that would, would be good for the life of your car. Uh, and, and I'm thinking the same thing. I said, well, you know, so often, uh, many of us, we just let our car break down and then we show up in the mechanic's uh, driveway and saying, fix it, you know, and then the mechanic is shaking his head going, wow, if you had just changed your oil, if you had just done this, if you had just done that, I imagine you must, uh, you must feel that from time to time when you, uh, when you're visiting with, with somebody who's come into the office. I think, yeah, I think we see that in, in every field and it's, it's absolutely an, uh, an appropriate analogy and, and that, uh, that holds true, I guess, for every <laughs> aspect of life. We can we can plan correctly, and you know, it's it's either uh, you you um, uh, plan fail to plan or plan to fail. You know, it, it, <laughs> or no plan, you will fail. So right. uh, when Joe's talking about an aging plan, and you're right, I mean, that's what Joe and I have been talking about <laughs> from day one, and it was Joe who was talking about it. Uh, not me, but it's absolutely true. When you talk about an aging plan, listen, if I, we talk within the field of dentistry, we do some very um, complex work here, which has quite a price tag to it in order mm-hmm. to be able to do the work that, that we feel is the best. But that doesn't mean the best work needs to be, that everybody needs the best work. Not everybody can afford the best work, but everybody can afford to take care of and either prevent or treat disease early. Everybody can afford that. And if we, and and just because we do fancy dental implants and fancy dental reconstructions, doesn't mean mean that some people uh, can't benefit from dentures and partial dentures and be able to do something that's more more affordable, but still take care of the disease process so you don't get into trouble. Yeah, and the way you're saying it makes me think, really, this is almost a perfect time to begin a segue into what what we really wanted to get into the heart of, which is the components of a good dental exam, because I'm thinking like when we go, most of us, I think, when we go to the dentist, we're saying, well, I hope he doesn't find cavities. That's that's a that's a you know, we've seen so many toothpaste commercials along the way. That's probably how most of us would approach this. At at least I know that had been my thinking all the way along. But I also hear a lot of times when, when we get in the dentist chair then then there's this talk about well we got to make sure your gums are healthy and there's a whole uh there's a whole thing that goes in there and i know that we've done programs before where you've talked about the great depths that you guys go because you really want to get a comprehensive overview of what's going on in a patient's mouth so if they come to you as a new patient and, and i think the key word that you use and i thought i thought this is an interesting word you call it a treatment plan because what you're really after is giving somebody a, a path or a program that's going to bring them to where they want to be with that health. And, and even, and this is our shameless plug for the Helping Seniors Organization, you've even made this possible uh, through a donation program where somebody can literally uh, donate an amount to Helping Seniors of Brevard. And then you actually waive the cost of that first two hour whole examination. And I know before we talked about all the things that you guys do do in all that. It's really it's really pretty comprehensive and uh, impressive. Uh, can you kind of like run through what happens in that? Yeah, I, well, we can we can talk about both. So the, the simplicity of it is. Um, uh, donate fifty dollars. Uh, just make an appointment and say um, you heard us on on Helping Seniors of Brevard Radio, and uh, just bring a check for fifty dollars written to Helping Seniors of Brevard to your first visit, and you get everything free. That includes the CT scan and the X rays and the full examination and a whole two hour experience where you have the entire plan uh, drawn up. And uh, you know we pride ourselves. Um, on, on making sure that we have a plan that everybody can can su- subscribe to. 
of it. As I said, there are different levels of treatment that we can all have, and some people can afford or choose to afford. Some people can afford more, and they choose not to do it. But we, we try to give uh, a, a, as a balanced approach as, 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 as you can so that you can get the treatment you need and stay out of trouble. You know, when we're talking about periodontal disease, we just talked about it earlier, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a different different stance on this. We talk about periodontal disease. One of the biggest problems that we have is the under-treatment of periodontal disease and the persistence of periodontal disease when it's not when it's not treated appropriately. And you and I talked about fractured calculus at one time and how mm-hmm. calculus is left below the gum line. You, you keep on having to have deep cleanings all the time. Well, you really don't. It means that the calculus was never removed uh, to begin with. So if you just get it done right the first time, you can get rid of those infections. You can get rid of uh, and, and get rid of those infections that are that uh, potentially would cause problems uh, in in other parts of the body, and more importantly, you can save your teeth. So it's a matter of diagnosing it correctly and then treating it correctly, and you can get things under control without spending an arm and a leg. And then and and, and I emphasize that so that um, get the plan done first. Get the plan done first. Look at the plan. Make sure the sequence of the plan makes sense to you. And by the way. That's not just in my office. That's not just in any dental office. That should be true in a medical office as well. You can't say to yourself, I don't understand it, but the doctor said it's necessary and the insurance company's paying for it, so therefore I've got to do it. You know? (laughs) You've got to be as good a consumer in your mouth as you are for your car, your house, or anything else. You need to understand it, and there is not one thing in the body they can't be put into language, into the thought processes that you can understand. Make sure yes. you understand. That is such an important part of that because usually, usually most of us are so intimidated. We get in, we see all the big equipment, and we know all the the studying that uh, the medical professional or dental professional has been through uh, to just be able to, 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 to be able to serve you in that way. And then we feel kind of like almost... Uh, unprepared to to ask the questions we don't even know enough the right questions to ask i think a lot of times it's true and the reason somebody's here for two hours does not mean that i'm with that patient for two hours you know yeah my my assistants are with the patient for two hours i'm doing what i need to do in order to be able to to um to to, uh, do the examinations and do the do the treatment plan or treatment plans but then i want my assistants to have enough time so the patient has every question answered and understands which direction he or she needs to go in or wants to go in and understands what what the sequence of events will be in order to be able to get back to smiling and chewing the way you want. <laughs> well, yeah, we're talking today on Helping Seniors Radio with uh, Dr. Lee Sheldon, uh, who uh, has a, um, uh, a wonderful practice, longtime friend of the Helping Seniors of Brevard organization called Solid Bite Dental. And uh, together with uh, Dr. Michelle Furtado, who is himself a periodontist and also your son, who was named one of the 40 best dentists under 40, uh, Dr. Matt Sheldon, uh, you guys have Solid Bite Dental. Dr. Sheldon, we're about to take a mid-show break. We're going to come back on the other side uh, talking about components of a good dental exam. And there's some interesting topics that I wouldn't necessarily have thought uh, were were part of a dental exam. I understand the x-rays and things like that. But there's some interesting stuff that we're going to cover right around the corner. But before we get there, if somebody has a question or they want to make an appointment or they want to take advantage of that opportunity to uh, donate $50 to helping seniors, and oh, get we'll a full cup. You want to donate okay. $200 to helping seniors? We'll take it. You want to find out, donate $500 <laughs> to helping seniors? We'll take it. All good for it. So how do they get in touch with you, Dr. Sheldon? <laughs> Give us a call, 321-259-8000. 321-259-8000 and you'll talk to Jennifer and Jennifer will know exactly what you're talking about when you said, I heard Dr. Sheldon and Helping Seniors of Brevard Radio and I want to take advantage of that special. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Alright, we'll be back with part two of the Helping Seniors Radio Show, components of a good dental examination with Dr. Lee Sheldon coming up in just a moment. And some sounds of the season there with Glenn Miller to get us back into the second half of our show today, Helping Seniors of Brevard. I'm John Harper. Your host is Carrie Fink, the Executive Director of Helping Seniors of Brevard. And let's get back to Carrie and his special guest, Dr. Lee Shelton. Carrie? 
Thank you, John Harper. Yeah, we are having a good conversation. It's Wednesday. We always gather around lunchtime uh, on the radio here at 90.3 FM WEJF and online at WEJF.net for the Helping Seniors radio program. And uh, we couldn't do this without the help of uh, the good people that help us keep the organization rolling. We're a uh, Florida nonprofit now in our 11th year of operation. We've operated the uh, County Senior Information Helpline kind of since day one. One, when Joe Steckler, our president and founder, uh, got the whole ball rolling with Helping Seniors of Brevard, uh, that phone number for Helping Seniors, our information line, is area code 321 321- 473-7770. And that's a free call. And over the uh, course of the uh, uh, past decade or so, uh, we've helped more than 4,000 families free of charge. And, and we get calls about every topic that you could possibly imagine. It could be from housing to legal to transportation to financial to medical um the li- to roofing. I mean, the list just goes on and on. We get uh, all kinds of calls for help in the home. It just it just doesn't stop. And, but that's what we're dedicated to doing. That's our service to the community. And then the other thing that we're very serious about doing is, is educating and trying to inform and to connect people to resources that will help them in developing their own aging plan. And so that's kind of where we pick up today's conversation with our very special guest, Dr. Lee Sheldon with Solid Bite Dental. And you've watched this organization and helped this organization literally since the uh, since the very first days. And so we're so appreciative of that. But we're talking on our topic today of the components of a good dental exam, because this is really part of your aging plan, I think, is understanding what you need when you get to the dentist. It is. Things can go bad. So, you know, it seems like they're going bad quickly. They actually go bad gradually. But once, uh, you know, there is the straw that broke the camel's back. And that often is what we see when you have the toothache or the tooth that breaks off or 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 or, or loose te- teeth or whatever it is. So, yeah, I mean, the examination, examination is inexpensive. $50 to charity and, and you do the examination, at least you find out where you are. Sure. You can create a plan from that. So it's, it, it's important. As a matter of fact, you know, years ago, Carrie, um, you know, the price of examinations, the cost of examinations kept on going up and up and up. Um, you know, because obviously you spend a lot of money on equipment and staff and everything else. And there was that moment where I said, no, you can't, we can't spend $200, $300, $400 in examinations anymore just for people to find out what it is. And so that's when we adopted the charitable giving campaign, which. It has been tremendous for the charities and, and helping seniors to provide has always been one of the charities. There are the charities are involved as, as well. Um, but more importantly, we needed to get rid of that barrier to getting the examination done so you can find out when you need. And, and by doing that, uh, um, you didn't have to pay four hundred dollars to find out. You only have to pay fifty dollars to helping seniors in Brevard to find out, and that's um, that's what's that's that's what's so important. There are a number of times we'll see patients. By the way, we'll say, you know, what we do and what you need isn't the right thing. Let me refer you to thus and so, who you know, who better fits your need. But at least the examination occurs. So you have you find out what's going on. You know, as as you were saying that, I'm I'm looking at your website at Dr. Lee Sheldon. Dot com and right there on the very front uh, it talks about the that, that the actual value of a new patient uh, exam is four hundred and twenty four dollars and I and I remember we had this conversation on radio and TV before where you said this is this is not only is, is when when you make that available uh, for donation uh, of fifty dollars obviously it, it, it does it, it costs you money on the one hand and it's a great value for the person coming in but it actually costs you, but you explained that it's really for the benefit of the lifetime experience for that patient because it allows you to get kind of your ducks in a row of understanding what's going on with that patient so you can make, uh, you know, really effective, uh, I guess, treatment plans and like, this is what I would do given what we're seeing here kind of things. Am I saying that the right way? It's true, because a long time ago I said, I can't just bring somebody in for cleaning and look at them for five minutes and know what they need. I, you know, there are plenty of places you can go for that. I, 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 
I need time. I need time and I need my information. I need x-rays. I need the CT scan. I need to be able to do a full periodontal examination. I need to be able to check your bite. I need to be able to check your soft tissues. I need to be able to check everything in order to have the confidence that I've looked at you completely before I start talking about you need this, this, and this. And so when you make that kind of decision, you've decided to spend you know, a certain amount of time in order to be able to, to, to accumulate the data that you need and create the thinking time necessary uh, to work through this. And even even so, uh, when, when I'm doing my examination, there's a certain percentage of patients that we reserve for Tuesday night because Tuesday night all three doctors meet and we all talk about patients together. So uh, and there are times uh, when we're with the orthodontist online talking with the orthodontist and going over the x-rays uh, together. Same with the endodontist. So there are a lot of things that go into comprehensive dental care. And that's, uh, it, it's the only way I want to practice. So um, some people don't want what we do. And that's, and maybe a lot of people don't want what we do, but we've decided how we want to practice dentistry and that's the way we do it. And uh, for us, it's a lot of fun and um, the results hopefully speak for themselves. No, it, it's, it's important. And on November 11th, uh, so last month when you were with us on the radio, we did part one of this show, uh, which was called Components of Good Dental Exam. And I'm giving you that title specifically. So if you grab a uh, pencil, you may want to you may want to actually jot this down. It, the show was titled Components of a Good Dental Exam. The reason I'm giving you that title is so that you can look this up. You can go to the Helping Seniors website, helpingseniorsofbrevard.org, and type that in the search bar. Again, components of a good dental exam. You could do that in the YouTube uh, channel on, on YouTube, or you could do that on the Facebook page. Uh, look under the video section. And again, just type in components of a d good dental exam and you'll hear part one. And I think um, we spoke a lot about full mouth x-rays and the CT scan, medical history. And I remember asking the question, like, why is it important? You know, all this other stuff, if I had an operation or things like that. And it was really a good discussion about that. And I think today, uh, what we wanted to do was talk about the fact that you do what's called the clinical exam. And and most of us um, who are outside the, the field wouldn't really, we would think all of that is is clinical exam, but you're actually talking about, this, this is where you're actually talking about looking at our mouth. Am I saying that right? I have to look. I have to feel. I have to probe. And the probing, by the way, is gentle. I have to be able to see how the teeth meet. I need to be able to put a piece of, of, of cellophane between your teeth so I can see if the teeth are meeting properly or not. I need to be able to have that hands-on feel for what's going on in your mouth before I can make a recommendation. So, you know, it's funny because uh, initially our examination, I'm spending quite a bit of time with the x-rays and the CT scan to see thickness of the bone, abscesses that may be occurring, as we talked about in the, in, 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 in the last show. But then when I get and people will say, well, what do you think? What, which I, what do I need? And the answer is, I haven't looked in your mouth yet. I've only looked at a, a, you know, at a computer screen. So I've got to get in there. I've got to feel it. I've got to see what the, I, I've got to see all of those components, uh, including the, the 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 amount of periodontal disease that's present, um, but how the bite is before I can really uh, make a recommendation to you. Wow. And, and, and there's so much that you do. You wrote something. This is actually going to end up appearing in, uh, you know, folks, we publish every uh, month in Senior Scene Magazine, that popular magazine available at over 500 locations around Brevard County. I think they put out someplace around 12, 14,000 copies every month. Uh, and I know it's it's a really sought after publication. And almost since the get go of Helping Seniors, um, John Fredrickson, the publisher, has been kind enough to give us space in the center of his magazine. We call it the yellow pages because there's like a, a yellow border around all of it. And we call it the Helping Seniors Newsletter. We we thought it was a great way to get information about what our organization is up to out to the public, but also uh, to have some really sensible um kind of things that help you along the way in your aging plan articles from from guest contributors and dr sheldon this is going to be one of those articles that uh that appears in the upcoming issue of senior scene magazine but you wrote something in there 
which I'd never even heard of. You, you talk about angles class, and, and that sounds, well, it sounds very geometric to me, but it was actually apparently about the guy's name. But these are all these yeah, things. Yeah, that is Dr. Edward Angle. <laughs> but, but we have no idea how deep you guys go into this. What is angles class? What does that mean? It's actually the relationship of the upper jaw to the lower jaw. A class one is a normal relationship. In a class two relationship, the lower jaw is smaller than the upper jaw, or the upper jaw is too large for the lower jaw, or a combination of each. And in a class three, the lower jaw is larger than the upper jaw, and you have that lantern jaw look. Well, the lantern jaw look and the way the teeth meet um, all correlate, and we have to decide how we're going to be able to design a bite or design the final occlusion, which is uh, the fancy name for bite, how we're going to design that in order to be able to correlate with your angles class uh, jaw relationship. Yeah, and, and it, you know, there's so many, like, I guess, nuances and things that you bring you bring to the table that we just think, you know, he's just taking a sharp instrument, sticking it in there, poking it around, and uh, most of us have no idea what, you, what you're looking for. I remember, I think you explained, like, this whole thing about uh, pockets that you're probing to see how strong or, or, or how strong our gum tissue is and things like that as well. When I'm probing uh, periodontal pockets, I'm actually placing a probe gently, and I'll emphasize gently again, <laughs> between the gum and the tooth. And I, I, and, and I take that probe, which is nothing more than a measuring device, and I slide it along the surface of the tooth until something stops me. And this thing that stops me is the attachment between the gum and the tooth. In a normal situation, I should only be able to probe down one, two, possibly three millimeters, and that's it. That means there's a healthy relationship between the gum and the teeth, and it means that the bone underneath the gum line hasn't deteriorated. If I slide that probe in deeper, four millimeters, five millimeters, six millimeters, seven millimeters, the more I can probe down the surface of the root of the tooth, the more bone loss that's occurred around that tooth. And why did the bone loss occur to begin with? Because that of that accumulation of calculus. Remember, we talked about calculus earlier in the show. Um, the accumulation of hardened bacteria that is now lining the root surface. And the body doesn't want to have anything to do with that calculus. And so as I'm probing down the root, yes, I'm, all, I'm measuring, as we said, how many millimeters I can go below the gum line. But don't you think I'm feeling along the surface of the root to see if it's bumpy? Mm. And if it's bumpy, I know there's calculus there. Mm-hmm. And if we remove that calculus totally, then the body wants to embrace the tooth again. And those pockets, for the most part, will go away. Interesting. So this is, again, kind of why I guess I would call it using our automotive model from earlier. That's kind of the preventive maintenance, right? Because you're, you're trying to, uh, to take care of this before it ends up creating a bigger problem with a more expensive car repair or, in this case, mouth repair down the road. Yeah, I mean, you can even look at it this way because I need my license. I, I, I just had my car service, and 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 I forgot to tell them, and they didn't check it um, that my windshield wipers need to be replaced. Well, if I were smart, I would have noticed that in the first streak a few months ago, <laughs> and then it streaks a little bit more and a little bit more, and then in in in, in foggy weather like we had this morning, <laughs> I couldn't see anything. I said, "Gee, I should have." done something about that right so right. it doesn't mean that i could have taken those windshield wiper blades and rejuvenate them it doesn't mean the body would the, the car would accept them again but i could have changed them over a little bit earlier than, than i did same thing here if i if i discover a a little bit of bone loss uh, right at the beginning boy i mean then then recovering what's been lost is a heck of a lot easier um always non-surgically or nearly always non-surgically than it would be if you've lost 10 millimeters of bone support for the tooth. Then you're going to get some of it back, but you're not getting all of it back. 
You, you know, everything that you're speaking about, uh, it, it's, it just it just reminds us again about the importance of, of getting a good comprehensive dental exam so that you're uh, you're not kind of stuck reacting. You get a chance to be a little bit ahead of the curve. I remember, again, sticking with our automotive analogy for just a moment. I remember going to a mechanic once and saying, hey, listen, um, the headlight bulb is out. And uh, he goes, which you know, and he goes, OK, I'll fix it. And he goes, I said, well, I didn't tell you which one. I figured it would be obvious once he hit the uh, hit the switch but he goes no I'm going to replace both at the same time I'm going like why the other one works fine he goes no they're both the same age and um, based on that I want to save you a problem when you get down the road so a month down the road you're not going to be having to come back in and do the same thing and I thought that's really uh, actually wisdom and thinking <laughs> thinking thinking a step ahead for the customer because sure enough you know you would otherwise be out on the road a month later driving home some, some night and uh, now you're winking as you're going <laughs> down the road so so i guess the question is you know we wrote this thing down as we were talking about you it, when you talk in this uh, the second part of the whole article that's going to be coming out in the senior scene about components of a good dental exam you say you make a, a, a there's a there's a big point about getting your bite right uh, you know we just think about teeth and gums maybe we think about gums but what why is the bite so important well it, let's assume you've had some teeth extracted earlier in life when usually when you have teeth extracted, you'll get the back teeth extracted. When you get the back teeth extracted, then um, the other teeth will drift into that site. When the other teeth drift into that site, then in fact you don't. Then you you've got a collapsed bite. Now the upper teeth and the lower teeth don't meet meet each other correctly. Um, your jaw might close farther as a result and you say well i just want to replace this missing tooth well if we replace this missing tooth in a state of dysfunction we're going to put a new a new tooth in a state of dysfunction and make your jaw deteriorate even more and wow. so we want to get the relationship between teeth the way they should be so that they're meeting against each other vertically rather than at an angle uh very often will re- will depend upon an orthodontist to straighten the teeth uh, in order to be able to replace the teeth uh, correctly. Uh, and we, we probably uh, work, we probably send out, oh, at least a half a dozen cases to the orthodontist a month um, because if we were to try to replace the teeth without having the teeth straight, uh, it would be difficult for us. You, you wouldn't be satisfied with the end result, or maybe we, we wouldn't. And we would just be perpetuating, as I said, a, 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 an already uh, deteriorating condition. Yeah, well, you know, over the, over the course of time, we've actually talked a lot. Uh, it's interesting that a guy who kind of led the industry into dental implants uh, and, and that part of it would also uh, author uh, uh, information for consumers that tell us maybe sometimes too many teeth are being extracted. Uh, and, and as a, I mean, <laughs> remember when we did that first show, we talked about yeah. that. And, you know, and here, here's the dental implant guy, <laughs> and, and he's saying too many teeth are being extracted. And, of course, you, now you know I'm part of a national research group who's right. trying to make this known every place. Uh, we have a major uh, publication coming out. Uh, I will be able to tell you about it uh, shortly, hopefully next month, um, to, to, to discuss that even further and and and. and uh, yeah, you know, dental implants have been romanticized. We see uh, commercials for dental implants on TV all the time and, and how wonderful they are. And they are wonderful. Um, but we've, we've lost the, <laughs> we've probably lost the idea that teeth are wonderful too. And uh, <laughs> in a way, it's a heck of a lot easier to repair a tooth than it is to repair a dental implant that's gone bad. So, uh, you know, we, 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 we the, the, the pendulum is swinging in the other way. And uh, there's a group of old guys like me who are trying to make sure that that happens. Um, <laughs> as quickly as possible. <laughs> well, so, but this is a question that, that, that we'd written down about this. So if, if we talk about teeth being extracted, what happens to patients with loose teeth when they, uh, when, when if they go and get their bite adjusted so that it's you know, working it's the right People have told me they need to have their teeth extracted. And so I look at them and I say, all right, you've got periodontal disease, you've lost some bone support for the teeth, uh-huh. but also the teeth are meeting the wrong way. So every time you bite down, you knock 
ah. teeth are too close. How about if we just grind on the teeth a little bit so that they meet correctly, even without seeing the orthodontist? We'll reduce the mobility on the teeth, and then the teeth will heal. Can you imagine wow. having a broken arm, carry? And not uh-huh. having a cast in your broken arm and you keep on hitting the broken arm. Do you think that broken <laughs> arm is ever going to heal? No. <laughs> no. And so the same thing happens to the mouth. If we just get the te- just take the stress off the teeth, clean the tooth, the body will snuggle right back up to the tooth. The tooth will tighten up. It's, it, does it happen all the time? No. And you, you know, at this age, I kind of know where it's going to happen and where it's not going to happen. But it happens a lot more often than we think. Well, that's interesting. So now, let's say we're sitting at home right now. How do we check our bag? How do we know if, if this is applicable for us? Do it the same way I do. Okay? So go to the store. Pick up a pack of gum. Uh-huh. Uh, dentists tell you to pick up a pack of gum. <laughs> All right. Sugar-free, right? <laughs> uh, sugar-free gum. Yeah. <laughs> Don't eat the gum. Just take the cellophane off the gum. Cut it into a quarter-inch strip Oh, about, let's say, three inches long. Now, bite down on that cellophane for each for each set of teeth. And when you bite down, try to pull the cellophane out. If you, pull, if you can pull the cellophane out, guess what? Those teeth aren't meeting. All 28 teeth are supposed to meet. So you've got 14 sets of teeth that should be meeting in a correct bite. If you have less than that, then there's too much stress on... Uh, on on the other individual teeth. And that means those Ah. teeth are going to be more likely uh, to get loose or to have a problem. Wow. That's That's exactly how I tested my... Now, I've got my own quarter-inch strips, which I pay money for, but you can do it with with cigarette cellophane, gum cellophane, whatever cellophane you want. And you can check your own bite and see how many teeth are really meeting. Fascinating. So we're talking with Dr. Lee Sheldon, who uh, is consulting periodontist with uh, Solid Bite Dental. Uh, they have a great website, by the way, at drleesheldon.com. But as we've been talking about this uh, new patient special, uh, which is actually a benefit, it helps our uh, nonprofit organization, the Helping Seniors of Brevard. You write a check for $50, make it out to Helping Seniors of Brevard, or, or better, as Dr. Sheldon has uh, artfully pointed out. I <laughs> I said $500. It's even better for me. I like it. We need to help, folks. If you don't help us, we can't do what we do. $50. But I'll tell you, when when people have the examination, we have to get the examination here, they're willing to donate more money because they're saying, all of that for only $50? I'm going to donate $100. I'll donate $200 to helping seniors. Well, it sure sure helps us along. And it's a great great value uh, for you as a consumer. But even more important, it's a great benefit for your health. So how do people get in touch with you, Dr. Sheldon, about, about all this? Um, best way is to call Jennifer at our office. Here we go, 321-259-8000. That's 259-8000. And just say, I heard Dr. Lee Sheldon or whatever you want to call me on <laughs> Helping Seniors Radio, and she will know exactly what to do. Well, it's funny. Tammy and I were just watching uh, Santa Claus. I think it was Santa Claus 3 uh, again for the holiday season. And and, uh, if you remember, the Tooth Fairy is one of the central character. Well, not central, but he's a supporting character in the movie. And uh, he wanted to have his name changed. And so they were suggesting maybe they call him the Molinator. Along the way, have you have people given you any kind of nickname or are you just uh, uh, Dr. Sheldon, the solid bite expert, uh, periodontist expert? (laughs) You have to look at my license plates so Uh we had when i first moved to um when i when i first moved here i think the license plate was gum doc and so i was called gum (laughs) doc then we had plaque man and Uh then in honor of the movie it was top gum but it was two m's somebody (laughs) Took the one with one M. So I, th- I, I, I think Gum Doc is still what I've heard more than anything else, even though we haven't had that license plate in years. That's great. Well, we're talking with Dr. Lee Sheldon. One more time, the phone number, if you want to get in on the uh, helping scene. You know, it's year end. So uh, as you're getting your giving done, uh, that'll help you on your taxes next year, possibly, and everything else. This one, this might be a good way to, to do a couple of things. So, again, how do you get in touch with uh, your office? Uh, give, us, give us a call at 321-259-8000. 
Oh, thanks, Dr. Sheldon. So in just a moment I have remaining, I want to tell you to mark this date on your calendar. It's March 20th, 2022, March 20th, 2022. 22. You know, those of us who had the privilege of being on the first Helping Seniors uh, Travel Club cruise in October. We had a wonderful time. It was about uh, the better part of 50 people who joined us, and uh, we all agreed we're going to go sailing again in the spring. So it's March 20th, 2022. We're going to be going on the Royal Caribbean Harmony of the Seas. Now, that's one of the world's largest ships. Uh, It's top class uh, Royal Caribbean, seven nights sailing from uh, Port Canaveral. And Chris Morse, uh, who heads up the Helping Seniors Travel Club, once again, has found incredible pricing uh, for this uh, for this particular cruise. So if you're thinking about something that you might want to do springtime of uh, next year, this would be a good thing to take a look at. And you can get information on the Helping Seniors website. You can call... Um, Chris Morse directly, or you can just uh, call us at the Helping Seniors uh, information line, and they'll get you a patch through. That's 321-473-7770. 321-473-7770. But again, that date, March 20th, on the Royal Caribbean, Harmony of the Seas, seven nights sailing from Port Canaveral. Join us with the Helping Seniors Travel Club, where when you do that, by the way, you're also supporting the work of Helping Seniors. So that's about it for today. So remember to give Dr. Sheldon's office a call. Um, Give us a call. If you need any numbers or any information, we're here for you. 321-473-7770. Hope you have a great week and we will see you next week on Helping Seniors Radio right here on 90.3 FM WEJF.